What do you mean by a single phase full bridge inverter? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term single phase full bridge inverter? Well, let's find out. So here an inverter is a device that converts DC voltage to AC voltage. That is what basically an inverter does. So to understand the working of a single phase full bridge inverter, first let us see the basic circuit diagram of a single phase full bridge inverter. So this over here is a basic circuit diagram of a single phase full bridge inverter. But if you observe carefully, it is more or less the same of a half bridge inverter. But the extra thing that we add here is that two more diodes and two more SCRs are added over here. And here, rather than splitting the voltage source into two equal half, we are connecting the entire voltage VS with this particular circuit. That is the basic difference between a full bridge inverter and a half bridge inverter. So here, let these, this diode be D1 and let this be D2. Let this be D3 and let this be D4. And let this SCR be T1. Let this be T2. And let this be T3. Let this be T4. So here first, let us understand the working of this particular circuit. So here, the working of this particular circuit is based on this particular SCR. So an SCR is basically a semiconductor device that has got a third terminal. So when we pass on a triggering pulse to this third terminal, that particular SCR becomes on and it starts conducting electricity. That is, when we pass a particular triggering pulse to this particular terminal of this particular SCR, it starts conducting electricity in this particular direction. Or if you are passing a triggering pulse to this particular terminal of this particular SCR, then it will start conducting electricity in this particular direction. As simple as that. So it is based on this particular simple principle that this particular inverter works on. So here there are two cases that we have to consider. The first case is when T1 and T2 are triggered. That is when T1 and T2 are on. And the next case is simply but when T3 and T4 are turned on. We can turn it on just by providing a triggering pulse. So first case, when we observe that T1 and T2 is on, what we observe is that current starts flowing through this particular loop. It comes over here, it enters T1 and it passes through the load, passes through the T2 and then completes the circuit like this. That is what happens when T1 and T2 are turned on. So therefore, a polarity of plus minus it's induced onto the load like this. Next, let us assume the case in which T3 and T4 are turned on. So when T3 and T4 are turned on, what we observe is that current starts flowing here. It goes like this. It enters T4 and it comes over here and it passes T3 and it completes a circuit like this. So therefore, as a result of this, a polarity of plus minus gets induced like this. So this is the basic working of this particular single phase full bridge inverter. Next, let us see the waveforms that are associated with this particular circuit. When we see the waveforms, we can have a bit more clearer understanding of the working of this particular circuit. So let us draw the waveforms of a single phase full bridge inverter. So we saw that these particular SCRs, that is T1 and T2, they start conducting when a triggering pulse is given to these terminals, that is this terminal and this terminal of these SCRs. So first, let us assume that a triggering pulse is given to the SCRs T1 and T2. So here, when a triggering pulse is given like this, we saw that a positive value of V0 is obtained like this. And now, when a triggering pulse is given to T3 and T4, what we observe was that a negative voltage started flowing like this. Again, when we pass a triggering pulse to T1 and T2, a positive voltage happens. And again, when a triggering pulse is given to T3 and T4, a negative voltage is obtained like this. So this is the output voltage V0 that we obtain. Next, let us see the value of the output current that we obtain across this particular load. So we obtain an output current like this. So we obtain an output current like this because this particular load that we take over here is assumed to be an RL circuit. So here this is RL that is a resistor and an inductor. So here therefore this is the kind of current that we obtain across this particular load. So here let us see a particular situation. So let us consider this particular place. So here when we consider here what we observe is that the voltage is positive but the current is negative. So therefore, that happens over here. That is, the voltage is positive, 
but the current is negative. So therefore, the current flows from the load through these particular diodes D1 and D2. Therefore, current flows like this. There is a negative current. So therefore, we obtain a current across the diodes D1 and D2 over here. Therefore, this is what we get here. Next case, what we observe is that both the voltage and the current are positive over here. So therefore, as both the voltage and current are positive, this current is supplied by the voltage supply itself. That is, the current is flowing like this through the SCRs. So therefore, here the current flows through the SCR T1 and T2. Therefore, I T1 and T2 over here. So the same repetition is observed over here. So here also it would be here like this. And the same repetition for this is observed over here as well. So the same thing happens over here. Next let us see this case. Here the current is positive but the voltage is negative. So therefore that happens because the load starts discharging and the dampening current starts passing through the diodes D3 and D4. That is current is actually supposed to flow like this but here it is flowing in the opposite direction. So therefore current flows through D3 and D4 and it completes the circuit like this. So therefore current flows through diodes D3 and D4 here. And the same repetition happens over here as well. So therefore this happens over here too. And next what we see is that when the voltage is negative, the current is also negative over here. That happens because of the supply itself and therefore in the, such kind of a situation, the current passes through the SCRs, T4 and T3 itself. That is IT3 and IT4 is passing. So it is over here. So these thus are the basic waveforms in the case of a single phase full bridge inverter. As simple as that guys. So this thus sums up what you refer to as a single phase full bridge inverter. As simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a single phase full bridge inverter. And we will be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.